In this module, we're going to look at some of the basic characteristics and properties of soil, some of which we will be looking at in our soil investigation. So soil is something that supports plant growth. It's different than just um, rock and mineral. Uh, the term that we use to describe rocks and mineral fragments is regolith. So that's when a rock weathers, breaks down into smaller pieces, and it's just that mineral matter. So that's similar to what the um, the ground surface would be like on the moon. There's no organic matter. It cannot support plant growth. There's no nutrients there. That's regolith. Soil supports plant growth, so it has to have the nutrients. It has that organic um, material mixed in with the mineral matter. So the composition of soil, you can see it still is mainly mineral matter, about 45% and then 5% organic matter. The other half of the soil is the pore space and it's either going to be filled with air, water, or both depending on um, the climate conditions or the, the weather conditions that have occurred. When we talk about soil texture, that's one of the things that we are going to be looking at when we look at our soil sample. Texture refers to the particle sizes. What percent is sand, what percent is silt, and what percent is clay. Of our particle sizes, you can see there sand is the largest, clay is the smallest. When we mix all three together, uh, we get what is called a loam, um, and it's going to be the best for plant life uh, because certain types of soil, if it's more sandy, it's going to drain water very quickly. Um, if you have a clay soil, it's going to uh, keep water from penetrating because it's an impermeable soil. So uh, what happens if you have a mix, you're going to get just the right conditions for plant life. When we determine soil texture, we use a soil texture um, triangle to determine the type of soil. And if you look at this, uh, this one is in color, so you can just follow the color lines. Um, but a lot of times they're just black and white. So if you look at the way the numbers are tilted, that will help you read it. So for example, let's say that I have a soil that is 40% clay. Um, it is 10% silt, because you follow this line up, that's the 10, and 50% sand, I would say that that is a sandy clay. So you're basically just reading off the percentage of each um, size of soil sediment, if it's clay, if it's silt, if it's sand. All right, all soils are different. Even the three soils that we picked up um, around Millbrook for our investigation, and there are several factors that affect um, the soils and why they appear different. So the parent material, the topography, the time, the organisms, and the climate all make up the soil properties. Alright, so starting with topography. Topography is the shape of the land. If it's a steep slope, you're going to have more erosion and you're either going to have very thin or non-existent soils. Whereas uh, flat land, you're not going to have the erosion, so your soils are going to be much thicker and form much quicker. Over time, your soils are going to change. If you start off with um, bedrock, you're going to experience weathering, uh, which breaks down your rock into smaller chunks, and then you're going to start to have uh, vegetation come in. So remember through primary succession, we see our mosses, our lichens, and that starts to add that organic material. Though as you're adding organic material, you start to see larger and larger plants. Um, the soil uh, gets even more and more organic material, and you can see it becomes much thicker over time. Um, the soil layers we call horizons, and we'll talk about what these horizons are um, a little bit later. Organisms can affect soil formation. Plants are, are what's going to add that organic material. As plants and animals decay, um, they give off acids that helps further uh, chemical weather those rocks. Um, animals that burrow, like earthworms, um, are constantly mixing the soil as well. Probably the biggest factor in soil formation is climate. If you have a hot, wet climate, you're going to have more chemically weathered soils because you're going to have um, more of those dissolving acids because carbon dioxide and water vapor form carbonic acid. Uh, sulfur and water vapor form sulfuric acid. 
Now if you have a cold, dry climate, you're going to have more mechanically weathered soils and that takes a lot longer because the rocks are just breaking down. There's no um, dissolving or anything speeding that up. So cold, dry climates tend to have a much thinner soil, so that's like our deserts, our tundras, than our, uh, say, our deciduous forest or uh, rainforests that tend to have hot, wet climates. All right, so here's our soil profile with our horizons. Um, the O horizon is that organic material at the top. Uh, it's also what we call leaf litter if you're in a forest. Um, if you go out in the woods and uh, you look at the soil underneath uh, the trees, it's very dark in color, and that's because of that leaf litter, that partially um, decaying organic material. Below that is the topsoil, or A horizon. It's a mixture of mineral and organic matter, which we call humus, not hummus. Hummus has two M's, and, and that's the stuff you eat. You don't want to eat humus. Um, but that's where the insects, fungus, microorganisms like bacteria that drive our nitrogen cycles and such, all of that's going to be in the A horizon. B horizon is subsoil. Sub means under. Um, when it rains and... Um, the water seeps through the ground, it's going to pick up those clay sized sediments. Remember clay is our smallest and they seep down. So the B horizon are all of those little particles that have leached down from the A horizon. And then the C horizon at the bottom is our partially weathered rock. So that's that parent rock that we started with. You can see over time, uh, once again through primary succession, um, in the early stages we're not going to see um, all of the horizons. We do have the C and we're just starting to get the A, but it's in our later soils that we actually see the B, those clay sized sediments. There's many different types of soils based on what they look like, what types of minerals are found there. Um, we're going to look at just a few. Uh, petal fir is the type that we have in this area, so temperate climates uh, tend to have a lot of iron, uh, which gives them that orange color. Petacals are um, usually found in drier areas, uh, so they're going to have less organic material. They don't have as much clay. Uh, they tend to have more calcium carbonate, which gives them a lighter color. We see this type of soil in our grasslands. Laterites are what we find in tropical climates. So remember here we have more chemical weathering because there's more moisture. Um, the problem with um, our tropical soils, because the trees aren't deciduous, uh, there's no leaf litter, they're not going to have as much organic material. Um, but as you can see from this picture, it is um, a good soil for making bricks. It compacts together very well.